And we're back with some more Factorio. And today we're on to the fun stuff. And by fun stuff, I mean, oh, how do we get all of the resources out to our little modules? You'll notice that uh, we have a section back here where we do train loading, right over here. And this is for all the raw resources, your ores, your oils, all that stuff is supposed to get loaded on. However, how do we figure out how much we need? How, how do we figure out where the inserters go, how long we leave them on for, all that type of stuff? Well, I'm glad you asked that rhetorical question because it's going to be a pain in the butt. For example, if we put, say, something there, throw a requester chest on it, and then say, give me iron ore and chuck it onto this, how much throughput will that actually give us? Time to go back to our spreadsheet. Just, just to figure this out, don't worry, it's not that bad. It's just we have to figure out the numbers we need. Now, over here, I've done uh, some more testing on the train sizes. This is our 310 train network, and I've tested using the exact train configuration we have right now, and we were able to get 346 trains to pass through it in 30 minutes. That's, a, that's just a good to know. 346 trains divided by 30 minutes means it's about 11 and a half trains per minute. Then all we have to do is go up to here. The train stops for five seconds. Each one stops for five seconds before moving on. And during that time, one inserter can chuck on 144 resources. So we just get 144 resources. We multiply that by 11.5 trains. And that gives us a grand total of 1,656. Yeah. So that's how much resources we can get if we put inserters on a train. And I say inserters because we'd have to put it on both sides. For example, over here, we need to grab this and we need to put... Oh, damn it. We need to put another duplicate of this right there. And that way we would have uh, both of those wagons being fed. That's because all of these numbers take into account both the trains passing through. So as long as we mirror this on both sides, we should be able to, with one inserter, get a throughput of 1,656 resources per minute. So then all we have to do is go back to our calculator and figure out exactly how much ore we need, which is like a, that's a lot of ore. Yeah, we're, we're going to need that much ore. So we just grab how much iron ore we have coming, we need, divide that by the 1,656. This is going to be actually very important, that number, that 1,656. That's how much each inserter gives us. And that will tell us that we need 26.76 inserters feeding onto our trains to actually get us enough throughput. Of course, we'll need to test that and we're going to round up to 27. To fit all the inserters on the train is a bit of a problem. There's 10 wagons, so if we divide this by 10, we get 2.7. So, not really going to fit evenly. We'd have to put, say, two inserters in the first wagon, two on the last two wagons, and then three in the middle. I really don't like the look of that. That would make it very awkward to manage. So I'm thinking instead of doing it that way, we actually just ignore one wagon. I, I should have mentioned each one of these little numbers is meant to represent one of the ten wagons in the train. So in this instance down here, we would have the uh, first five wagons would all have three inserters feeding iron ore on. Then the sixth wagon would have nothing, and then the last three wagons would then have another uh, three inserters feeding onto them, or the last four wagons. That should work. Now we just have to test it. And to test it, I think I know how we can manage that quite conveniently. So while I was testing all of this and making sure the trains would actually throughput nicely, in fact, we should have a quick look at the map. It looks beautiful the way they, they all go through. You can see them all there going from... Uh, oh, starting to, like, when that one stops, this whole next row along the bottom will just start to move off pretty much all, at, all at once. And then they all move up one stop, and then they stop again, and then they move on, and then, you know, it's all just the trains moving just that little bit inching along until they get to the end and then zip all the way back to the start. Ah, beautiful little system. But I've gone, done this train loader over here. What we're going to do is delete all the trains that are on it, reconfigure all of these trains. We're going to need to do some changes there. And then uh, release them all. Well, we'll do a bit of a save, then we'll release them all and see if we actually get the throughput we're anticipating. First up, though, all of these trains had to have to go. Every single last one of them. So, uh, deletion time for me. All of our old trains are gone. The network is spotlessly clean. And, oh my god, some of the power wires. Nope. Nope, not going to worry about the power wires. What we're going to do over here is we're going to unleash the new trains. Now, all the new trains are built on this template here. Basically, they go from station A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Yeah, they go all the way around to K and then back. Uh, and as you'll see, all of those stations, well, you can't really see from this angle, but all of the stations are labeled that. So all of these trains are going to keep tra traveling along, stopping at each one of these stations for five seconds and then coming all the way back to the start. And all of them are configured identically to this train. You'll notice here there's a whole bunch of iron ore in here. And then three sections for iron plate. Every single carriage so far, but one is configured the exact same way. The one that's different is number five, which has steel in it. And I'll go over why all of that was configured that way later on, but for now we'll just check out one of these trains down here. Actually, you, you're just leaving. You'll notice this train has 
Exactly. Nine modules almost full, or nine sections almost full of work, except for the 32. 32 at the end, 32, 32, all the way along. That is entirely on purpose. That gives us a certain amount of throughput. If you had any less sections mapped out, we wouldn't be able to carry as much as we need. Now, that all comes down here, and oh, apologies again, the video quality will go a bit weird here. YouTube doesn't like compressing lots of moving things. It doesn't do well with static or glitter or things like that. Anyway, this uh, iron ore gets ripped off by stack filtered inserters. They're basically stack inserters, but they'll only pick certain items. We set them to pick only iron ore. So they'll rip the iron ore off this train because for now it's fine. We've only got iron ore on it. But later on, we're going to be putting on copper ore, green circuits, red circuits, blue circuits. There's going to be all sorts of stuff in this train. So we need to make sure that everything, every time we're pulling this stuff off, we have to filter it. So we only take off what we want. But anyway, uh, two inserters are removing iron ore. That iron ore gets fed into the steel furnaces. The steel furnaces feed it back into these chests and these chests chuck it back onto the train. Done. And then it goes along here and more iron ore gets unloaded and turned into more steel, which gets chucked into more chests, which gets dumped onto the train. We did have to split our steel production because it was just so large. I didn't want to have it any bigger because the bots would be traveling too far. Then any remaining iron ore, which for now is not a lot, is going to get uh, dumped into this section, which is our iron plate. Oh, and it reminds me, has all of these trains unloaded? Oh, damn it. Oh, that's a miss. I shouldn't let that happen. Uh, I sort of let uh, a train get out that shouldn't have been... You know what? That should work. That train can slide in behind if it hasn't clogged the system. Done. Right. With that done, we should be able to just fast forward this and see how the system works out. We should be able to get a production reading. So give me a few minutes. Would you look at that production graph? Mm -mm 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 -mm. We're producing a little bit more steel than we need, but that's to be expected. And yep, iron plate wise, we're basically burning through the exact right amount of resources. So it does work. Loading the stuff onto the train, unloading it at the correct stations is actually functioning. However, uh, I made a, a few changes here. I messed up on the steel. This here is where I did all the calculations to figure out what we needed and where. For example, this is our iron loading and we needed 27 inserters. So we eventually went with just the 3330, 333 all the way along. And that's how many inserters we have loading iron ore onto the train. But we also had to figure out how many slots that took. So three inserters multiplied by 144 per inserter gives us the number of slots we're going to need. We always have to round up, of course, remember, because this iron ore, you can only hold 50 per slot. Then we had steel. Well, and the steel stations, I messed up on these at first because I, I combined them all into one and double it. Uh, never mind, I was using doubles. But that's how much iron ore we're going to need. You can check it out here. That's how much iron ore we need to make steel. Then what we do is we take that iron ore amount and we divide that by 1656. That number over there that tells us how many, like, how much per minute one inserter will give us. And that tells us that eight inserters will give us more than enough, uh, well, will give us enough iron ore to feed the system. And then I just went to it, well, we have nine wagons with iron ore, so I just put one on each of nine wagons. Then for steel back in, or the actual steel bars that we get out of this, or steel whatever, steel plate, you want to call it, we get 3,554 of that per minute. We divide that by the amount of inserters per minute, and we round it up and we get three inserters. And that whole slot mess will take up four slots. However, we have two steel stations, so then we just, well, basically double it. However... Because of the way steel works, it holds 100 per slot in the wagon. We were able to actually get by with just seven slots for the steel. Due to my stupidity, I actually had 14 or something or something going in. I doubled this by accident. But if that's the worst mistake that happens to me while I'm trying to work my way through this, I, I think that'll be good. Uh, anyway, iron plate, same thing. We just had to figure out how much iron ore we needed. We just needed 13 inserters. I just stuck two on all of them. It's just easier. In fact, I think I put three in the end just so we could rip off all the iron ore and make sure we, we scooped out the last. Every single scrap of iron ore is consumed off this train system. And then we just dump all the iron plates back into the train. So if we check out along here, let's go find a returning train. Ah, here's a returning train. You'll notice it has no iron ore left. It has 2,000 iron plate and 600 steel. And off it goes. Each one will be a tiny bit different, just to, just because of the way it works out. Yeah, 643 steel. Some will have a little bit more, some will have a little bit less. There you go. Just, just due to the natural variance of the trains passing through and when they stop. But all in all, it works out and we get our production numbers and we get exactly what we need to produce. So now, all we have to do, very simple, we, we just have to do the same for copper. And then we have to do the same for green and red, green and, or sorry, blue circuits and green circuits and red circuits. Yeah, that'll be easy peasy, easy peasy. Doing the copper, that's simple enough. All we have to do is figure out how much copper ore we put on, how much copper plate we put on, and just leave space in the train for them. It was a little bit of calculation, some math, but it's not that bad. But then we hit a snag, and that was blue. 
blue circuits, which are way over here. Ah, yes. Blue circuits. Well, blue circuits require that sulfuric acid. And I was thinking, actually, what if we just made the sulfuric acid right here? We don't actually need a lot of sulfuric acid. And if we load it on at a loading stop, it would actually simplify things. So I'm thinking we build a little something like this. This here feeds this sulfuric sulfur plant. The sulfur plant just feeds directly into the sulfuric acid. Uh, sulfuric acid is pumped right out here and gets barreled up. So we're going to barrel the sulfuric acid for our blue circuits right here at the loading dock. Now, we don't need a lot of it. One, one, just one slot on a wagon should be fine. So we've set up one slot on the wagon five to contain sulfuric acid and one for empty barrels. So what should happen is this will fill all the barrels of sulfuric acid. They will get chucked onto wagon number five. Where, is it? where, where did I put wagon number five? Ah, down here. So they'll get chucked onto wagon number five. There'll be one slot available for them. That should be more than enough to produce all the blue circuits. Then all the used barrels at blue circuits will get dumped back onto the train and offloaded here. Those offloaded empty barrels will get dumped back over into this requester chest. And this requester chest is what feeds the, uh, the sulfuric acid barrels which is great. It also feeds these barrels over here because we're going to barrel lubricant here as well. Why not? If we're going to do one barrel, we might as well do others. Now, I was thinking about the ste steel and I was going to unload steel off the train, but then I thought, why not just make steel on site? We have speed beacons, productivity modules, all that. So we just take some raw iron ore. We feed it directly into the smelter. The smelter feeds it into, well, the steel smelter. The steel smelter throws it into this provider chest. And this provider chest, we load right over here. I couldn't figure out how to get that from there to there. So I just gave up in the end and said, you know what, I, I'm just going to use bots. It, it was taking too long as it was. Then that steel gets loaded in here to make the barrels. So the barrel production is all handled here. And if we've done this right, it should even out. And once the system has filled with enough barrels to be used for everything, it'll stop making more barrels. We shouldn't have to worry about it and put ones in and out. No, no, it, it'll make them as it needs them. If it doesn't need any more, it'll stop. In theory. And then I thought, well, while we're doing all of that and uh, I'm being so productive, why not just sort out fuel as well? Because you see, we have to fuel all of these trains. And I figure, what if we just have a little fuel production facility at every single stop? That way this can fuel all of the trains that pass through here and it can actually even fuel the bigger trains that will be going out across the map. All we had to do was, well, make nuclear fuel. And it does require uranium-235. I haven't quite figured out how I'm gonna squeeze that in. So for now, we've got an infinite chest for that, but we can, we can sort that out later. However, the uh, rocket fuel is produced on site. That rocket fuel is going to be produced from the oil that we're going to be bringing in from over here. So theoretically, we should be able to produce all of the all we need to make our fuel for our train system, except for the uranium-235. The enriched uranium, yeah, I'm not sure how we're going to manage that. We might bring in another train here and just have it only carrying uranium, though that would start getting complicated because we need to ship out sulfuric acid. And, you know, we'll worry about it later. For now, this should give us uh, the basics of what we need to get blue circuits started. So now we just got to finish, f figure out where we do the loading and unloading. This here is Blue Circuits humming away. It is powered exclusively by barrel sulfuric acid that we're bringing in. There's no magic chests here providing stuff. Pretty much everything here is being produced on the network somewhere. The only real magic stuff is going on here at the beginning where we, we have our resources being magically created just to, just to test the design. So as you can see, we're producing all of the copper plate we need. We're producing all of the, uh, well, copper plate, iron plate. The sulfuric acid, the blue circuits, all of it's getting dumped back onto the train and the train destroys them on the other end. But yes, it works. I mean, look at, where is it? Let's go, last 10 minutes of production, we have 860 blue circuits per minute. I think we only required about 840 to hit target, so we're definitely hitting what we need. All via train system. I love it. And if you zoom out, we can see those trains going beautifully round and round in circles down there. Actually, let's speed this up a bit so it looks a bit more impressive. Let's do it about four speed. And you can see them just zipping around. They stop next. It's like just sort of synchronized to perfection. I love it. All right. That still leaves, though, several things that need doing. Uh, we also need to put in red and green. Red and green circuits needs to be done. Then I did hook up solid, solid solidification, though I have to rip out the batteries. We don't need the batteries from here. And actually, we don't need the sulfuric acid from here either, or the sulfur. We can get all of that from our sort of mall slash siphon over here. The mall siphon that thing can produce more than enough batteries and sulfur for the for the rest of the base so i don't think we need to double down on that or have two sections of it it'll just save us some uh, save us some production capacity over here we still need to hook up all of the basic sciences that's going to be a monstrous unload and then we're going to have to have hook up this one as well which is you know space science and actually putting the science into the the laboratories this here is the perfectly sane notes of someone 
who was just trying to figure out where everything should go. This is how many slots they require, where they're going to be placed. This is actually blue circuits. So just, yeah, this, this is probably the fastest or easiest way to explain it. We needed this much copper plate to run it at capacity. So we divided it by this number, which was our, our magic number to know how much an inserter will provide per minute, which tells us we need eight inserters. And then we just have to stick them onto the train at the correct cargo wagons to pull out the prerequisite resources. Then we also had iron plate, same thing. We had to divide that and then figure out which ones to pull it from. Now we only needed six inserters, but we put one inserter on each iron cargo wagon so we could draw evenly from all of it. Uh, same with plastic, though plastic had to be loaded up, which was on solidification, which we're not going to get into. So that means we just needed two inserters in plastic, but it isn't actually contained in four wagons. So we have put one inserter on each of the four wagons. Acid, that just comes in barrels, which is in uh, wagon five. And the empty barrels go right back into wagon five. And then blue is in wagon six. Yeah. So this, this was the perfectly sane, normal thing a human was doing to try and figure out how that worked. And it all did not hurt my brain too much at all at all. To actually make this mess work and test it, what I do is I actually keep these trains here and this is the default save. And then I modify everything and then remove this train to start the system up. It's just, if you try to actually stop start everything when you need it, it would, oh, it'd drive you crazy. You couldn't be able to handle it. You'd have to actually stop all the trains again, change all of their cargoes. For example, if I change this and I go, okay, instead of a fish here, I want, well, let's just say green science. Then what I can do is I can just go grab this here and go, I'll copy you. And then I can just slide that across all of them. And now all of them have green science inside them. I'm not saving that yet. I'm definitely not saving that. But it's just a quick way for me to modify the entire system and then let them loose. So what I'm going to have to do is basically configure all of these trains, make sure they're all perfect before we actually go into a real save, and then just unleash them all. Because if you try and change them after the fact, it's going to be a nightmare. You'd have to go along to each one individually, find the correct wagon, change it. No, 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 not a chance. The one quick question, if anyone knows a, a way to do this, how do you change trains to automatic? Like what I have to do right now is I have to go into a train, change it to automatic, go to the next train, change that to automatic, go to the next train. There's no shortcut that I can find to do this. I have to manually change all of the settings on all of those trains every time I want to test the system. A little bit frustrating, not going to lie. But no, no, I'm going to cut this out here. I think next episode, we're going to tidy up oil and have that feed into the system so that all of our oil is provided from uh, our refineries because right now it's just being magicked in. Uh, as well as that, we're going to finish off red circuits. Well, in fact, all of it. We're going to finish all of it so that the only magic providers will be here for coal, iron, coal, or, sorry, iron, copper, coal, and stone. And then we'll have crude oil being pumped in, being magicked in here, but everything else will be produced by us via our train system. So close, so close. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck.